Hey guys, welcome back to another Q&A video. Most of the topics discussed today will be for summer equipment. It's been a while since I posted a Q&A and that's because I just got so busy throughout the winter and the spring and I actually kind of forgot about the Q&As until I've been getting comments from my viewers to bring them back. So at this point, I'm going to try to put out a Q&A video once a month. Don't forget to send your questions. Even if I don't reply, I do read them and I do base my upcoming Q&As on questions that I receive from you guys. And I also want to welcome all my new subscribers and I want to thank all my faithful viewers. If it weren't for you guys, my channel would never be where it is today. So thanks again. The first question I'm going to answer today is one that I received from a YouTuber a little while ago. And what he asked me is, do you get a shock when you hold the spark plug like this and turn the engine over to check to see if there's spark? Well, the answer to that is no, I do not get a shock when I check for spark that way. And that's because I'm holding the actual spark plug boot in my hand. I am not touching the metal of the plug or the engine here. So for example, if I hold the spark plug like this and pull it over to check for spark, you're going to see firsthand here that I will not get a shock. And you just saw the spark there. And the reason for that is because the spark plug boot is acting as an insulator. However, if I did hold the plug like this and touch the engine at the same time, my hand would be acting as a conductor from the spark plug here to the engine and I would definitely get a huge shock. So never test for spark this way. Only hold the spark plug boot with your hand and ground the plug to the metal of the engine you're checking the spark on. Doing it this way is pretty well 100% safe unless your spark plug boot is defective or it's completely wet. If you do get a shock holding the spark plug boot and doing it the way I told you, you should replace the spark plug boot itself. And if you're actually afraid to get shocked, you can actually leave the spark plug grounded like this and remove your hand from the spark plug boot, check it, and you could see if there's spark. For my next question, a YouTuber asked me, why would a chainsaw overheat if you remove the top cover? And this is the cover we're talking about. It covers the carburetor and the engine cylinder. Now you can remove this cover to service your saw. And the reason why the engine would overheat is because the cover acts as a deflector from the air that is being pushed by the flywheel. When the cover is on, the air blows through the cylinder, cooling it. So if you did use your chainsaw without the top cover, you could end up blowing up the engine. However, if you start it up for a few seconds and then stop it without the cover, it will not affect the engine at all. For example, on some chainsaws, it's easier to set the carb with the cover off, but only do this if you're doing it in a short amount of time. I have to stress again that if you run it for an extended period of time, it's going to get extremely hot and if you don't blow it up, you can cause permanent damage and then your saw may never run like it used to. So it's a good practice to make sure that your cover is always properly installed on your chainsaw and also make sure that the cylinder head fins are clean all the time. The next topic I'm going to discuss here today is about lawn tractor batteries. A lot of people come in the shop and are always wondering why is my lawn tractor battery dead? I just put it in a few years ago. And another common complaint is, I just bought a lawn tractor last year. I went to start it this year after having it sit all winter and nothing happens. And what that means is that these batteries will not accept a charge anymore, so they need to be replaced, even though it's only been a year or two. And one of the big reasons for that is that these batteries aren't built as good as the batteries in your vehicle. They do not get used every day like your car does, for example. Unless you buy a higher end battery, the quality will just not be there. To give you an example, if you buy a lawn tractor, sometimes you're going to have the cheapest battery installed. It's going to have the lowest cranking amps like this one here, which is only 150. To give you an example, if I replace the battery in my lawn tractor, I'm going to get one that is 375 cranking amps. Not only do you have longer starting power, but the batteries themselves seem to last a lot longer. For example, I may get two more years out of a battery that's 375 cranking amps as compared to this one here. And another reason why these batteries don't last is because people leave them in their lawn tractor outside all winter. I do recommend that you take your battery out and store it in your basement. If you're afraid to put it on the concrete, you can always put a piece of wood under the battery first. It's much better for the battery if it's not left outside in the freezing cold of winter. To give you an example, it can go as low as minus 40 Celsius here where I live. So it's definitely a good idea to store your battery. And even if you do all these maintenance tips, don't be surprised if you have to replace your battery after two to three years. However, replacing the battery in your lawn tractor is just part of the maintenance. 
Now another common question that I get in the shop here and from my viewers is what kind of oil should I use in my lawn mower? Well these two grades of oil here is what I most commonly recommend to my viewers and customers. The first one here is 10W30 oil which you can easily find in almost any store. And the second one here is SAE30, it's a much thicker oil. This one here though may be harder to find in most stores. You may have to go to an auto store or Canadian Tire here in Canada to find a similar oil. And that could be one reason why most people will end up using 10W30 in their lawn mowers and lawn tractors. Personally though I'll use HD30 or SAE30 in my equipment here in the summer because it's a much thicker oil and I think in general that it's better for the engine. But whatever oil you pick here to use you can't go wrong. Another question I often get on YouTube and in the shop here is do you use brake parts cleaner to clean small engine parts? Well my answer to that is yes I actually use it sometimes here in the shop. One thing I really don't like about this brake cleaner is it has a really strong odor even though it says on the can here low odor but the one good thing about it is it's non-flammable and it evaporates quickly. I've actually used it to clean some carburetors and some really dirty internal parts on engines. However, be careful if you clean internal parts that are made of rubber or diaphragms. If it sits in this stuff for too long, it could damage them. And two other products that I use here often in the shop are Mercury Power Tune and some choke and carburetor cleaner. I really like the Power Tune because it's nice and thick and it actually sits on the parts that you spray it on for a while. It doesn't evaporate as quickly as brake cleaner or card cleaner. This stuff here is actually for combustion chamber cleaning. However, you can use it to clean some carburetor parts. And this choke and carb cleaner as well, you can use it to clean your carb. And you can use it to clean other parts as well. However, as I mentioned earlier about the brake parts cleaner, don't soak any rubber parts or carburetor diaphragms in this stuff for too long. Now if you're wondering which is my favorite out of the three, I will have to say that it's Mercury Power Tune. You can get this at any marina that is a Mercury dealer. Now in the next clip here I'm going to show you some damage that was caused by rodents on a lawn tractor and I will mention a few things that you can do to try to prevent that in the future. On this lawn tractor here you can see it's got a new fuel tank and that is because a rodent got to it. It actually chewed the gas cap over here and part of the fuel tank. Now why would they want to chew a gas tank? I'm not quite sure because there could be odors which would actually deter a rodent from doing that. But you just never know with rodents they chew anything that they think is food or that they can use for nests. And oftentimes they can get under the cowling of your engine. The cowling's removed from this engine right now but they can get all inside here and the ignition module is usually over here. This one's removed and they often end up chewing the spark plug wire or the wires that go to the ignition module which can therefore cause you problems. Now one thing you can do to try to prevent that is put some mothballs all over your engine in the fall when you put away your lawn tractor for the winter. Usually the smell of mothballs and scented dryer sheets will prevent that, however it's not 100% guaranteed. And where I live here in Canada, it's usually in the fall or winter time when the rodents get active inside people's equipment. And the last topic for today is the K100 fuel stabilizer. This stuff here actually makes water burn. I did make a video doing a water test with it. And this was the jar in the video that I actually used and there was 50% water and 50% K100. It mixed both together. Now guys, I'm not being paid by K100 at all to mention them today. I actually buy all the K100 myself. The reason I'm mentioning it again today in the video is because I've had a lot of good success with this stuff. I've had a lot of customers buy it, use it and come back and say they were amazed by how well it worked. If you haven't seen my video on the water test, the link is under the video today as well so you can go watch it. Make sure you go watch it so that you can see the results for yourself. And by the way, I buy this by the case and I use it here in my shop almost every day and it does prevent a lot of equipment from returning or from not running properly if they have a bit of moisture in the fuel. So that'll be it for today's Q&A video guys. Thanks for stopping by to watch it. Make sure to subscribe and to follow me on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, and Instagram. And have yourselves a great weekend.